Hello and welcome to the Tuesday Tech Tip video. Today we're going to talk about repricing estimates. So as you can see here on my screen, I've got a Texas, Dallas, Texas price list loaded from November of uh, 2015. That is the price list that the original statement of loss was written in and I try to recreate exactly what the adjuster created and then we'll reprice this as to, to today's uh, pricing to see what the differences are and um, you know how much of an increase that we're going to see. So first of all I want to talk about naming conventions of the price list. So we're just going to pull up my little paint program here and kind of go over this uh, with you. So the first part of the price list here is going to be the first two letters that you want to pay attention to. The TX here is going to be the state that you're dealing with. The next two letters are going to be the area. So it's the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So that's why it's DF. I'm not sure why. I guess, you know, we call it the DFW area. So they uh, shortened that, of course, to the two-letter naming convention. So we've got Texas, Dallas-Fort Worth. 8X is the version number, the version of Xactimate that you're working with. So if you see 7X here, you're dealing with the 27.5 price list, which is available for download if needed. Then you've got your date, so April 2016. So the month and the year is the last part of that uh, price list. So just so you know, you can kind of look at it, eyeball it, and know what you're looking at whenever you see a price list uh, name there. So going back to Xactimate, let's do a quick reprice. Now I don't need to leave the estimate. Um, you don't have to go to any other screen here. You can go right from the parameters section of Claim Info. That's where I'm at. And we're going to change the price list. We're not going to touch the checkpoint. We can leave that alone. It's not going to affect anything. It's the price list that you want to change. It's going to make a difference. So I'm going to drop down the arrow here next to price list. I'm going to go to the smart list. Now, yes, I do have the April 16 um, downloaded here, but I want to show you how to download one in case um, you're needing to find one that's not on the list. Okay, so drop that down. I'm going to go to smart list here. And right from the smart list, I can request a price list right there. Just click on that. It's going to ask me, do I want the current exact for price list? Why, yes, I do. And what zip code do I want it for? That's going to be a Dallas uh, zip code there. And it's going to key off of the zip code that you had entered over in the insured info section. Now, what if we wanted, um, for whatever reason, wanted to download a prior price list? Maybe we're writing an estimate and we don't have the price list that the adjuster originally used. Well, that's not a problem. I can also drop down the list right here and go by name and I can type in by hand what price list that I would like to download. Maybe it's a, a State Farm price list. There, are, Instead of an 8X or a 7X, we'll have a 28. Underscore, maybe I want, it was written last July and I need a July 15. So you can hand enter the price list here. You can download current. You can download older. Whatever you want to do, there's quite a few options here for you to uh, to play around with. So then I just hit download. A little window would pop up. I'm not going to do that and take up your time, but it uh, would download right here. Say, yes, the price list has been downloaded, and then you can just click OK. And then the price list would populate here to your smart list. So for this exercise, I'm going to go ahead and just grab the April. Let's see what the difference in pricing is from November to the current price list. Whenever I change the price list, the sales tax jurisdiction is going to pop up. I'm just going to use the existing jurisdiction here and left click OK. Using this price list, would we like to reprice? Why, yes, we would. It's going to pull up. Would we like to reprice all the items? Yes, this is fine. I don't normally ever change or touch this at all, so you can just accept these defaults. Left click OK. And there we go. We have $219 we would have left on the table if we wouldn't have ran the reprice. So it's always good to take a look and see. And then, of course, you can argue that we would need to use today's pricing because we're buying purchasing material today. We're not purchasing material from last November. We're using today's market conditions. So that's why you, you should argue for the reprice there. So this has been Alina with Xactimate Mastery. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We update a new video every Tuesday. If you'd like, go to our website, www.xactimatemastery.com. That's x8mastery.com. And sign up for our weekly newsletter. Hope to see you soon.